You know, we have to be more consistent throughout the game. Well, we'll get back to work and we'll focus on how we can do that against Denver. But you have to, to beat good teams, you have to have more than that. You have to have the details, you have to have the execution. That's the focus moving forward is it, it starts with the effort, it starts with the finish, and that's who we are. But it also has to be about the details and the technique and the, and the understanding of, of the play and making it work. This week on Titans All Access. That is a great tackle on a really elite athlete in space. Playing against the NFL's best hasn't seemed to phase this rookie. Mahomes throwing it to Kelsey. Ball tipped up in the air and intercepted. Learn the reason why Roger McCrary ain't scared. And it bounced right to young McCrary. Plus, here comes the heat. Getting to the quarterback is something this Titans defense is executing at a high level. Mahomes stepping up, in trouble, sacked! He's gonna be sacked! Under pressure, hit, sacked! Dave McGinnis breaks it all down. And the two-tone blue look to get back on track against Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. All of that and plenty more coming up on this edition of Titans All Access. The franchise record for touchdowns for the King, Eric Henry, has number 76. Sack! Under pressure, he's going to be sack! It's McCrary with his first career INT. Intercepted, Andrew Adams. Intercepted, Fulton with the interception. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio and this week's edition of Titans All Access. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. We're glad to have you with us as we prepare for the salute to service game at Nissan Stadium. It's Sunday, the Titans take on the Broncos. Look who's dressed for salute to service. It's a theme. It is a theme indeed. Amy Wells is ready and we're ready to play this game for a lot of reasons. One of the biggest, last Sunday's loss to Kansas City. Ooh, tough. Tough to take. It was tough, but there was a lot of good that came out of that game, and a certain somebody, Roger McCreary, got his first interception. That was very exciting. That was exciting. It was very exciting. And so that made me think he should be our Hughes and Coleman decision of the week because How so? drafting him oh. was a great decision, it right? It was a great decision. And it was a big decision from the standpoint that the Titans had made a trade with the Jets, and they have the 35th pick overall, which is the third pick of night two. So you're sitting there and you've got all these great players available and yet they chose to take McCrary because they believed he was a perfect fit. And when I met him at the Reese's Senior Bowl, I knew that John Robinson was gonna pick this guy. You meet him, you talk to him, you understand him. He is a Titan. Now you had the opportunity to talk to John Robinson about Roger McCrary and the rest of the Titans rookie class. Let's check out the first part of this week's Talking Ball. We're going to see some more of Roger McCrary in this edition of Titans All Access. I want to know from your standpoint as a GM, what attracted you so much to Roger McCrary to make him the 35th overall pick in the 2022 draft? Well, I think stylistically, we saw a lot of things in his play that really fit what we were going to do. He was a really competitive match coverage player when he was playing man. He showed a lot of awareness um, and savvy and instincts when he was playing zone. And he was a willing tackler. He didn't mind coming up, uh, getting his nose dirty in the run game. All of those attributes are things that certainly we've put a premium on defensively for us. And, you know, he showed a lot of those things here so far in his rookie year. Rookie tight end Chigakonkwo had an outstanding play on your first offensive snap breaking tackles and going 48 yards with a quick screen. Talk to us about Chig's progress during this, his rookie season. Continues to develop, Mike. You know, you see the athleticism, the speed, you know, on that play that you're talking about, but the well-roundedness that he's starting to kind of come into as a pro player. His blocking has really improved. He's an aggressive, assertive blocker. He's continuing to refine the details uh, and route craft in the passing game. And I think the most impressive thing has been his special teams play. You know, he did it in the Kansas City game. He saved a punt from going in the end zone. He's made tackles in the kicking game. Really, any facet that we've put on his plate, he's worked hard to improve and continues to improve. The development of this rookie class and its ability to produce results already, what is it about these guys 
that have allowed them to play so well so early. I think they're really coachable. You know, I think that they didn't know what to expect when they came into an NFL program, but they've adapted to our culture, to the way that we want to play stylistically, to what we put on them, you know, throughout the course of the week. And we've gotten production from, from a lot of those guys. You know, we saw trailing early. Hopefully we get him back here pretty soon. We talked about Roger. Nick Petit Ferrer has started every single snap at right tackle. Uh, Malik plugged in a couple games and you saw the improvement from Houston to Kansas City in his play. Chig has improved. Hassan Haskins has improved as a running back, kick returner, and special teams guy. And then some undrafted guys. Ryan Stonehouse, he stepped into the punter job. It has not been too big for him. Trey Avery's made plays on special teams. Sam O made a couple plays in the Houston game. So that entire class, it's a close-knit group. They work hard, and I'm proud of the progress they've made. Usually it's year two before a rookie class really takes shape in terms of production. You've gotten it in the first half of the season, so with that being the case, how much more can you expect for them in the second half of the year based on the fact that they've been forced to play so much already in 2022? Well, I think we hope to see that steady, continued improvement. You know, sometimes in the in a rookie year, you get the ups and downs and the ebbs and flows of a rookie year. But through the first half of the season, they know the daily routine, they know the weekly routine. They've, they've each individually developed how they get ready for a game, how they study for an opponent, the familiarity of the offense. There's not a lot of new stuff going in, so that's you know maybe a little easier for them to digest. And that familiarity with the process, with the routine, you know, will hopefully pay dividends for us here in the back half. John Robinson clearly pleased with his rookie class, also clearly wants more from them over the last nine games of the season. And from what we've seen so far, that seems like a distinct possibility. You know who else John Robinson's probably pretty pleased with? Who's that? Titans defense. Yes. They've been getting after quarterbacks all season long, including Patrick Mahomes. On the other side of this break, Coach Mack is here and we're going beneath the surface. We're gonna look into this a little bit, so stick around. Turn me up. Turn me up. I play for something bigger than ourselves tonight. Think about back home. Let's work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like that. Come on, man. All night. All night, bro. Let me see. That's what we need. Now calm down. Let's go. That's how you win first down. That's how you win first down. Wrap up tackle, get off the field. Let's go. We're seven. We're seven. There it is. Hey. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. You one thing the way you're playing, you hear me? Yeah. Not one thing. Not one thing. Yeah. Don't let him push you. Yeah. 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 Come. I told you it was going to come back. I told you it was going to come back. Hey, D, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Turn on the shine so bright, shine so bright. Go, go, go. 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 From the Bet MGM Studios, Titans All Access continues. The Titans defense this year already 23 quarterback sacks, a big reason that the Titans are atop the AFC South. And as Dave McGinnis shows us in this week's Beneath the Surface, those sacks are coming from just about everywhere. Hey guys, Coach Mack here with this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface, beginning now. Today we're going to look at four sacks in the game against the Kansas City Chiefs on Sunday night. First play we're going to look at is the Chiefs are in 11 personnel. They're in a 2x2 two two alignment, four-man front, man-to-man. -man. Kevin Byard is on Kelsey. They start out in a two-high look, morphs into a robber dropping down on the defensive right side. Now they've got a double on Kelsey. There is nowhere to throw the ball. 
Mario Edwards gets a vicious chip on the left side from the running back in the TE game. Bud Dupree got a great speed rush on the outside to the right tackle, forces Mahomes up in the cylinder where Danico Autry uses a speed to power rush to the guard that comes off the guard to make the sack. Really a nice job of coordinating front with coverage. They're in a red gun set, which means it's a split back look in the backfield. Kelsey moves up to the line of scrimmage before the snap, as does the running back McKinnon, moves up on the right side, forming an empty look. Titans are in man-to-man -man with David Long being the low hole rat. Four-man rush from a wide four-eye uh, alignment. TE game on the right side with Autry and Dupree. Autry picks the tackle perfectly for Dupree, then Autry comes off the offensive tackle to collapse a cylinder and make a really, really big sack. Titans initially show a two-high look, move to a single-high man-to-man defense, with David Long being the low-hole rat underneath. This is, again, a four-man rush. Titans didn't use any pressure. Their pressure came from tremendous four-man rushes out of a three technique and a, and a shade and a one technique. Mario Edwards Jr., number 94, makes a really good speed rush on the left offensive tackle, collapses the edge on the quarterback with tremendous secondary coverage, causing Mahomes to have to hold the ball, eat the ball, take the sack. Again, aligned in a wide nine ball stack over here to the defensive left side with Kelsey being the outside element of the stack. Titans are in a four-man front. They pressure rush on the running back with Dylan Cole. Nice job passing off of the stack. Andrew Adams now becomes the low hole rat. Number 95 to Marcus Walker makes a great arm over swim move on the offensive guard. A great job all night by this defense, especially using a four-man rush, mixing coverages, and completely confusing Mahomes early in the ballgame all the way through the middle of the the fourth quarter. Up next, you heard the GM talk about him, so why don't we hear from him himself? Roger McCrary, number 21. He's our Nissan Insider next on Titans All Access. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Rookie cornerback Roger McCreary got his first career interception against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. And that's no small feat. That's hard to do. But the level of talent in the National Football League doesn't seem to intimidate the rookie player. Mike Keith had the opportunity to sit down and chat with him about that and so much more in this week's Nissan Insider. Ball tipped up in the air and intercepted. It's McCrary with his first career INT. So what has changed about your life since you became a professional football player? I wouldn't say not a lot has changed, but it's just like me going, like walking around the city, me me even traveling here in the airport. They were like, oh, you're Roger McQuarrie. It's just like, I finally like people noticing me because the only people notice me from Auburn or Mobile, but it seems like they notice me everywhere now. So it's just, it just a side on that part when I'm finally like getting noticed and everything. <laughs> so you're a professional football player. Yes, sir. That's your job. You meet somebody. Hi, I'm a cornerback for the Tennessee Titans. It's pretty cool, right? Yes, I mean, has it sunk in? I'll say it haven't sunk in, yeah, because when people ask me, they'll be like, do you still play for Army? I'll be like, no. They'll be like, who you play for? I, I'll say Tennessee Titans, and it sounds weird at first because it's finally, like, I'm finally saying it now, but it's just, like, amazing just to finally say that, that I play for the Tennessee Titans, though. Do you feel pressure? No, sir. I don't feel pressure at all. I just I just feel like I'm in a great position for a great opportunity. That's, that's my mindset. And I'm just happy just to go to the next level, just to finally compete at the next level. That mindset carries over to the field for you. You're not really scared of anything, are you? Uh, no, sir. I'm growing up. I went against a lot of great guys and everything. And I'm not scared of competition. It's just going to make me better. So I, I'm just happy just going against other great guys and everything. And, I'm ready for the challenge. I'm ready for everything. Everybody has shown the video of you guarding Jamar Chase last year. They've told Titans fans, this is who we drafted. Do you think that's a good representation of who you are? Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, that was one of my biggest first games ever. And, and I feel like just that game, that should tell you a lot about my whole career. I went against one of the top receivers that's doing great in the league now. And just like finally being on the team, I feel like with that confident going against Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow, them two guys, still teammates, it's just great finally getting that exposure in college. And I know I have the chance of going against them again in the league. And you were not a corner until you got to Auburn. You had never played corner. Never, I never, I never played corner. Um, I really played one snap just to stop the dude from going deep. But other than that, I was playing safety, receiver, running back. That was my main position. So when I first got to Auburn, that was a bit challenging playing corner. 
Do you think you're better off for that because you never learned any bad habits? Oh yeah, um, I would say like that, that helped me a lot, just playing different positions and everything. Um, and finally, you know, I was gonna be great at it because I could finally focus on one position and just prepare my craft and everything. And I feel like that was great. It was no bad habits, no nothing. Do you think that helps you going into the pros based on the fact that you haven't been doing it that long and so there's still more that you can figure out? Oh yeah, it's most definitely. Looking at it, I only played cornerback for four years. And that's the guys who played it since they was just since they was a little kid. So I feel like I got a lot of room for improvement. When Titans All Access returns, Mike Keith and John Robinson are talking ball and previewing the Denver Broncos. So stick around. Titans All Access continues with Talking Ball, presented by Duncan. General Manager John Robinson, as always, is here helping us preview Sunday's game against the Denver Broncos. They get a lot of pressure on opposing quarterbacks. Why is Denver such a complete defense overall, John? Well, I mean, I think they got a lot of good players, uh, Mike, even after, you know, the Chubb trade uh, to Miami. You know, it starts up front with the two guys in the middle, DJ Jones and Purcell, two really strong interior defensive linemen that can collapse the pocket. Uh, Draymond Jones is having an outstanding season for him. I think he's got 30 plus pressures and half a dozen sacks. Uh, two younger linebackers, both from Ohio State, Cooper and Browning. You know, they factor off the ball and as rushers. And then in the back end, you've got two really outstanding safeties. You know, Simmons has been to several Pro Bowls. Uh, Kareem Jackson, who we know from his days in Houston. Uh, both of those guys are really smart football players. They're around the ball a lot. And then in the corner, they got Sertan. You know, he's a lockdown guy, uh, one of the better corners in the league. On offense, their quarterback is somebody we know from his days in Seattle. We're talking about Russell Wilson. Does it seem like that he's getting in sync with the Denver offense and that the Denver offense is sort of learning how to utilize Russell Wilson's special gifts? Yeah, he certainly made a lot of plays, both running and throwing. Uh, and he's gotten better. You know, he's, um, he's made a lot of plays in this league. There's not a defense or blitz that he hasn't seen. Um, he's got a lot of playmakers around him, too, with Sutton, uh, Judy, Hamler, you know, the three receivers. All of those guys are fast. Sutton's probably the biggest of the group. Uh, a veteran group of backs in, in Gordon Murray, and they picked up Chase Edmonds in the Chubb trade as well. And they're getting this rookie tight end, Dulcich, going a little bit too. He's a fast player out of UCLA. So you can see the progression starting to take place. All right, so John, I want to ask you about something that I saw in Next Gen Stats, which I thought was fascinating. And that is the Titans have blitzed less than any team in the NFL, and you've gotten more pressure than any team in the NFL with just four men rushing. What's allowed that to happen? How are they doing that so well? Well, I think we've done a good job of platooning players, trying to keep as many fresh guys in there as possible. Uh, I think the coordination of our rush games has been really good and the unselfishness of our players. Uh, when we ask you know, a defensive tackle to maybe go pick a, a ta an offensive tackle so that the outside rusher can come inside and then lo and behold, the guy doing you know, all the dirty work ends up getting the sack or the pressure. Um, and then the little details and the intricacies of a pass rush uh, that we coach, uh, you're starting to see those show up on film more to help them defeat the pass sets of the offensive linemen to get back there and get pressure on the quarterback. What are the keys to beating the Denver Broncos Sunday at Nissan Stadium? Well, I think we've got to affect the quarterback, you know, the one we just talked about, continue to get pressure on him. Uh, and that starts by stopping the run, forcing them into passing situations uh, so that we can get that rush going. Um, and then offensively, it's, it's what we know. It's running the football, setting the pass up off of that, and letting our special teams complement both phases of the game. John, thanks as always. Always a pleasure, Mike. All right, John Robinson with us. Talking Ball, presented by Duncan. We've got more Titans All Access coming up right after this. In honor of this week's Salute to Service game, the Titans hosted a military appreciation luncheon at Nissan Stadium on Wednesday for their season ticket members who've served in the U.S. military. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Now, Mike Keith, before we get into the real details of the upcoming game against the Denver Broncos. The game ticket. The game ticket. Before we do that, I want to talk about something really cool that the Titans did in honor of the Salute to Service game. Oh, what's that? The Titans invited out active duty U.S. Army soldiers from Fort Campbell to play in a flag football tournament at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. The Military Bowl. The Military Bowl. 
Bulls heads. The Military Bowl is a flag football tournament that we partner with Fort Campbell, the USO, MWR, and their base command. Military service is one of our pillars, so to be able to you know, host this event and uh, have all these soldiers here with us and then eat a little dinner is, is just fantastic. It's one of the events we really look forward to every year. It's, it's our favorite event to put on during this Salute to Service Week. But I think for the for the soldiers that are getting an opportunity to do this, it's, it's world class. I mean, it's a stressful environment in the Army and to get to come down here and let loose a little bit and remember their you know their athletic careers and all the things they've done I think is just wonderful for them and, and something that they'll remember the rest of their lives. It's a league-wide initiative all over the country it's a, it's, it's a great initiative within the NFL but uh, we feel like uh, for, for us it's a little extra special we try to take it a little bit further than everybody else because like I said military service is so important to this organization we want to show uh, these guys love and, and our appreciation for for the sacrifice that they have for our country. And, uh, you know, it's just an awesome event. We look forward to it every year. <laughs> the Military Bowl presented by Tito's. Thanks to Tito's Vodka for sponsoring this great event for the men and women who serve us every single day. Now, let's get to the game ticket. Titans Broncos Sunday, Nissan Stadium. Amy Wells, take it away. Of course, Mike Keith. It's my favorite part of the show. This Sunday, at noon, the Tennessee Titans host the Denver Broncos for a salute to service showdown at Nissan Stadium. The first 13,000 fans through the gates will receive a Farm Bureau scarf. Restless Road is performing the national anthem and the community drive of the game is benefiting the bridge ministry. And the Titans have to stop Russell Wilson. They do. That's what it comes down to. And they have to be able to move the ball on this Denver defense. We'll remind you that Amy Wells and Rhett Bryant have Titans Countdown coming up at 11 a.m. Central. Kickoff at 12.02 from Nissan Stadium. It's a big one in the AFC, 5-3 Tennessee hosting 3-5 Denver. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.